Welcome to Make Something with me, David Picciuto, and today I'm going to show you how I change blades on the bandsaw. It's not as complicated as you might think. I only use two blades on my bandsaw. The one blade is the 3 16 of an inch 4 TPI skip tooth blade, and then the other blade is a half inch resaw blade. I get them both from Highland Woodworking, not a sponsored video. And I'm going to do some resawing, so I'm going to swap out the 3 16 of an inch blade, it's hard for me to say, with the half inch blade. How many times will I cut myself just opening this up? We'll put a little counter on the screen. There we go. All right, so that's the blade that we're going to put on there. Set you aside. So we'll open this up. My bandsaw has this little quick release lever. If you don't have that, you just have to keep loosening that guy. There's this guy, which never really learned what that's for. Pop this guy out of here. And just go ahead and remove the small blade. Put him over here for now. So this guy on here. So I'm just going to loosen things up here to make room for the blade. Same thing down here. Move the guide bearing back. So we got the, got the blade on there. Gonna snap this back in place. If you don't have that quick release, you'll just have to sit here and tighten. And to be honest, I use the exact same tension for the half inch blade as I do the 3 16 inch blade. There's a lot of theories on tension and like how tight it's supposed to be and you use the, the finger trick and calipers and get gizzets and gasmos and gizmos. I don't care about blade tension. And say what you will, but I wrote a whole book on making bandsaw boxes without worrying about blade tension. Get over it. Now uh, I'll use this, this, this guy back here and just get the blade centered on the wheel. And that's looking pretty good. And then I just want this to kiss the blade. We'll tighten that down. Perfect. And then I'll move this up until it's just behind the gullet. Tighten that down and then I'll bring these in. I, you know what? I don't even know the terms for everything. I just know how to use it. And I guess that's what's important, at least to me. And some people do the dollar trick where there's just a, 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 a paper dollar bill amount between the blade and the bearing. I don't do any of that. I just get it really close. Sometimes just kiss it and then back it off, tighten it down. And then the same thing down below, which it's hard to get a camera in there so you might not be able to see what's going on, but we're doing the exact same thing. The guide bearing just kisses the blade. We're looking good. And so then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn it on and make sure it stays centered. I'm gonna turn it on real quick and then turn it right back off. That's gonna let me know that the blade is going to stay on the wheels. Looking good. A Little bit too much rubbing on this bearing here, so I'm gonna back it off. down here yeah, I can I can hear it I don't want too much friction there we go and that's it no no gizzets 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 
what, do you, what would you say? Gizmos and gadgets? No gizmos and gadgets. Egos. Took, took two minutes. Most of that was just me talking. And we're good to go. There we go. So like I mentioned earlier, I only use two blades. That's the 3 16 inch four TPI skip tooth blade for uh, curves. And then for resawing, I used a half inch resaw blade from Highland Woodworking. I'll have links to both of the blades down below. Everything I need on the bandsaw can be done with those two blades. The point of this video is maybe not to teach you how to change the bandsaw blade, but just to know that you don't have to get too fussy about certain things. The tension does not need to be perfect. I just throw a blade on there, I get it so it doesn't wobble, and we're good to go. I just start cutting. I would rather spend my time making and cutting on the bandsaw than fidgeting with the tension. And also, as far as the bearings on the blade here, I get as close to the blade as I can without actually touching. And then when, I actually, when it is cutting, the, the pressure of the wood will probably make them spin. That's okay. This back bearing here, I want it as close to I can, as close as I can without actually touching. So when there is pressure on the blade, this will, will spin. I don't use the dollar bill trick. I don't care about the tension. I just want to get a blade on there and start cutting. And that has worked fine for me for many years. So I have another bandsaw tip video on resawing without gadgets. There will be a link to that here that you can go check out. I love resawing by just drawing a pencil line on the board and slamming it through the blade. No need for resaw fence or fancy tools. If you like this video, let me know by giving me that thumbs up. Please share it. Uh, if you really like what I do and you want to support me, you can head on over to patreon.com slash to find out all kinds of rewards. We do extended videos. What else do we do? We do weekly giveaways. We do one-on-one -on -one Skype calls. So head on over to patreon.com slash to see how you can support this channel. Eric, let's give him a little teaser for what we're working on for Thursday's video. That's all you get. That's all, that's, that's all they get. So come back on Thursday for our project video. I think you're going to like this one because it's real easy. It's something you can batch out and sell at craft shows and Etsy. So as always, be safe, be passionate, and make something. Cut. Today, I'm going to show you how to resaw on the bandsaw without any special tools or gadgets. Many new bandsaws will come with a very tall fence, and this is great for resawing unless you have drift, meaning the blade will want to wander to one side or the other, which is many times the case. And if so, then you need to angle your fence to compensate for that drift. You can also get this special resaw fence that secures to the base with magnets 